Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this big old guy right here. This is the Immolent MS-18 flashlight. Now, first off, before we go any further, I gotta thank Immolent for sending this guy along. They reached out to me, said, hey Nick, uh, would you be interested in checking out the brightest flashlight in the world? Uh, yes, by more or less definition, right? That kind of a superlative I cannot resist. Um, but as always, I said in my full disclaimer on my website, I told them to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. They did still send it along. Nonetheless, we have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. Here this guy is against a uh, standard 18650 battery, uh, which... Yeah, this is big. Um, here it is against the Spyderco Delica, which, yeah, this is big. Here it is against um, the Jetbeam RRT-01, uh, which is, uh, well, this guy is big. Uh, and then here it is against uh, <laughs> one-tenth the light that this is, the <laughs> Nightcore DM-10K, 10,000 lumens. Um, I, I kind of am sad they didn't write 100,000 lumens on you just to one-up it. But nonetheless, this is a really, really freaking big flashlight, right? I'm the 100%. And actually, that brings us to the next point. Why is this thing so big? Well, because this, this is exactly why this thing is gigantic. This has a bunch of freaking emitters on the top of it because this is able to shine at 100,000 lumens. Now, that's a ridiculous number. I got to be real with you here. And of course, all of the numbers I have for lumens are going to be provided to you by uh, provided to me by the manufacturer. I do not have the ability to test whether this is actually putting out 100,000 lumens in a meaningful way, but this is pretty uncontroversially if those numbers are to be believed the world's brightest flashlight. Um I did try to go outside and get you some beam shots, but they turned out to be really dumb and bad because of uh, the exposure metering basically on my phone that I shoot with. And so as a result, I don't have that. If you're looking for beam shots, you're going to have to find some other videos, but luckily they gave these out to a bunch of people, so there were a lot of videos out there. And then finally, one big note, um, one big note, um, this is a big cost. This is $670, which is, um, yeah, it's a lot of freaking money for those of you paying attention at home. So, uh, do keep that one in mind before you, uh, go ahead and make a purchasing decision, but let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting, very, very strange flashlight. So, on the good side, to start with, this actually comes in a very nice case, which, <laughs> for a change, I can put under the camera now. So, it comes in this whole case right here, which, actually, that doesn't fit either, but it has a little cutout for the, uh, for the light itself, for the charger, etc., all of that stuff is in there as well as for the shoulder strap. And you know what? That's not bad, right? Um, if you're paying this much money, you might as well. Uh, <laughs> you might as well. Uh, so this is a, uh, a nice case, right? Um, that's good. Next thing, this also does come with a shoulder strap. And here is the shoulder strap right here. Hey, on it, and it has these little lobster clips that attach right here, and then can also attach right in the back here to one of these guys, and so as a result, you are able to hang this guy off your shoulder, because God knows you can't put this in your pocket, and it's really not a great idea to put it in a backpack either. Um, it's a little bit awkward for that too, so it's nice that they give you that option. Next thing, this guy does have a little screen on it. Let's see what this is turned on to. Okay, it's at 10,000 lumens to start with uh, right now. Let's go ahead and Change that up. No, not not higher, lower. There we go. We'll put it to 700. And But what we see here is it gives us the uh, 700 lumens as well as the, uh, it gives us our voltage right now, 15.92 uh, volts. So that little screen gives us some sense of where you're at in the process. And that's actually useful because past a point, it's almost academic how bright it is. The difference between 60,000 and 100,000 lumens is not all that huge. I mean, it is, but at the same time, like uh, impressionistically... <laughs> It kind of becomes a little bit potato potato at that end. My eyes are already burnt up to a little crisp, so that's that's a thing. Next thing, this does have some water resistance to it. It's IP56, which means it's okay for heavy seas and jets, right? There's not a major, not like jet plane, but like jets of water, etc. So it's nice to have that out there, and it's nice to know that if you're out searching and rescuing, so to speak, with this guy on your shoulder strap, you're going to be okay. It's not going to, you know, go to heck if it starts raining. So that's a nice thing. Next thing, this does have a software lockout mode. So if I turn this guy on and I press this one, two, three, four, five times. Oh, wait, maybe it has to be off. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, now it's locked. And that means that if I just hit this button, nothing's going to happen except it's going to say, hey, bro, I'm locked. Dude, I'm still locked. But if I hit it five more times, one, two, three, four, five. 
Oh, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now it's unlocked. and I can turn the light back on. So that's a nice thing, right? Um, I do appreciate that. It also has a hardware lockout because if I turn, let's see here. There we go. If I start turning this guy, what we're going to see here is there's a certain point at which it just kind of turns off because it's no longer in contact with the battery pack. And so at this point in time, there is nothing, there's no ability to discharge it. And it's also possible, by the way, and it shipped with a little card of, I think it was a paper or a plastic or something like that, in this space right here, which completely prevents the light from turning on. The positive terminal, I don't know which of these is positive and negative, but either way, the terminal cannot touch this little guy right here. And so as a result, um, there is absolutely no... Uh, no chance of it turning on. And that's a very nice thing both for shipping and for long-term storage for reasons we'll talk about later on. Next thing, this guy does tail stand. Um, and I I don't know if I, yeah, I can do it under my camera, but it is able to sit on this surface down here um, and tail stand up, which is good because there are going to be times where you might put this down on the floor in the middle of the room and turn it on and <laughs> there's, your, there's your illumination. You got the sun suddenly. Um, so that's a nice thing. Um, I got to say also, this is not about the light per se, but the list of things you can use this for on their website was hilarious, right? Some of them are very reasonable, like large area lighting for disaster scenes of security. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's exactly what this is going to be best for, right? If you're on top of a hill and you got a bunch of people searching things at the bottom of the hill, turn this on, suddenly it's daytime, right? It's maybe a little bit exaggerated, but still, um, it is very serious in that way. Or shoreline search and rescue makes a lot of sense, right? You're out in a boat, you point this at the shoreline, by God, you're going to find anything that's out there and you're going to startle the heck out of some pelicans. But more, uh, some of the other stuff was a little bit more amusing, like ultra long distance distress signaling. I mean, yes, true. If you want the space station to know they can stop and find you, that's great. But who's carrying this around? Well, backpacking for signaling or to blind or disorient suspects and assailants. To be fair, if I'm if I'm mugging somebody and they take this out of their backpack, I'm going to be pretty disoriented at that moment too. And it would certainly blind them. This could also be a theft deterrent. Um just because it's so heavy. Or my very favorite on their list was Emergency Fire Starter, which is actually not wrong, right? This puts out a crazy amount of heat at the, the toward the front of it that I am absolutely sure could light a piece of newspaper on fire if you needed it to. So um, at that level, yes, that's true. But it's a little weird that they put it on the site, but I, I was amused by it, so I'm putting it under the good. Next thing. Um... And kind of the big thing here is that the short-term outputs are wild on this. I'm Again, I'm using their numbers for lumens. Take some skepticism here. But this turbo mode is 100,000 lumens. Now, what I'm going to go on ahead and do here is I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to shut off my review lights here. I'm going to point this at the exact opposite side of the room here. So you can still see my hand here, but I'm pointing this at the other side. So already you can see a little bit of distinction when I turn it to 700 lumens. But if I double click to get the turbo mode, we are currently at, oh God, I looked up, uh, we're at 100,000 lumens. And that is completely freaking wild. If I point it up at the ceiling, this is like brighter than daylight in here. This is an absolutely wild output number. The difference between 100,000 and 60,000 lumens is actually in practice a little bit less than I expected. And by the way, um, you get 100,000 lumens for a minute in the turbo mode. Um, it steps down pretty quickly there. You get 60,000 lumens for 70 seconds. Um, and this is also a dumb amount of light. You get 30,000 lumens for a couple of minutes, um, which is a ridiculous amount of light. Uh, and then the steady state high, the, 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 the level whoa, there, that it can stay on at is uh, about 22,000 lumens. You get an hour of that or so. Um, you can get 10,000 lumens, 10,000 lumens for the middle setting, and you get... Uh, uh, let's see here. I forget what the exact duration of that is. And then 700 lumens will get you about 14 hours of runtime. But this has ridiculously high outputs. This is comically powerful. You can take this out and you can point it at, you know, the, the, the landscape around you and suddenly you control the daytime. That's pretty cool, right? And I can totally see the very best use of this as being taking this guy out on your deck when you have friends over and going, I control the power of the sun and turning this on. And suddenly they're like, oh, huh, you do. That's kind of cool. So at that level, the outputs from this are wild. Um, They are so wildly above anything I've ever experienced from a flashlight and especially coming from the era of mag lights, it's just like, oh my god, really? 
how? But at some level, that, that that's pretty cool. I gotta I gotta admit that. And then the other thing that you might have actually heard there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this on here, and I'm gonna see if I can do this. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four. No, three, four. Maybe it has to be off. One, two, three, four. There we go. This actually has active cooling. This right here is an intake fan that is blowing through these heat pipes and going to the output fan. I'll see if I can kind of show you the... I'm using a light to illuminate a light. This is my life now. But if I try and shine through here, what you're going to see is there is a whole bunch of copper heat sink fins. There you go. All through there. There are heat pipes and all that stuff. And so you have a set of fans. These look like computer-like server fans in their running that are blowing air through these heat pipes uh, and through these copper cooling fans. And this is great. And you can manually turn that on to help cool the light off a little bit more quickly after you've uh, used it in turbo for a little while, which is actually a nice little detail. Um, and But it's kind of cool that this is a light so powerful that it requires not just heat pipes, but actual active fan cooling. That's ridiculous at some level, but it's kind of cool. And it's kind of on brand. And it's just like... Yeah, I guess I now do own a flashlight with fans. Okay, that's fine. So to me, all of that is the good, is that it has an active cooling system, which is pretty necessary given the amount of heat this guy puts out. The short-term outputs are absolutely wild. The list of things this is used for is hilarious. Um, it tail stands in hardware lockouts. There is software lockout as well. It is water resistant. It has a uh, nice screen on it that tells you the output level. Um, it has a shoulder strap and it comes with a nice case. On the great side, Honestly, the, the thing that is most interesting about this is that it exists at all. Oh, I should turn on my actual review lights again. Or just turn this thing on and do my review by the light of the sun. But anyways, the fact that they did this at all is kind of stupid and magnificent at the same time. I mean, if you look at this guy, just the reflector itself is ridiculously shaped. They have all of these different Cree emitters. That's crazy. They have an active cooling system with fans. That's crazy. They have, uh, the, this whole thing is one gigantic battery pack featuring eight 21700 batteries. That's ridiculous, right? This entire light is completely and totally ridiculous, but at the same time, it's kind of awesome that they went there. This is a Halo product through and through, but at the same time, it's a ridiculous and it's kind of a fun one. And I think that's kind of what's great here is it is ridiculous and fun. And for a lot of flashlight enthusiasts who have a lot of disposable income, this might be interesting on that alone. So to me, that's what's great. This is ridiculous, and this is fun. So on the bad side, the uh, charger, which I'm realizing I have to go to in the other room because I had to charge it last night for reasons we will talk about later on. The charger on this guy is just a good old-fashioned charger. It's a generic sort of AC adapted to uh, two amps, 19 volts. But um, it is using a barrel plug, and this barrel plug plugs into... This little guy right on the back here, and this actually lights up with red and then green when it becomes charged. So that's kind of a nice thing. But at the same time, um, in order to charge this guy, you need to take this little cap off and put in their barrel plug charger. Now, this is a pretty generic charger, right? I imagine you could replace it down the road, and, you know, the barrel plugs themselves are pretty interchangeable, too. But at the same time, it is a little bit frustrating to me that this is using its own special charger rather than using an accepted standard like, for instance, USB-C power delivery or something like that. I'm being a little bit picky here, but at the same time, I'm getting really, really tired of companies who expect me to buy and use their charger rather than using the existing multitude of chargers that are interconnected with most of the devices in my life. I, I really wish they'd gone the extra mile and made sure that they support a, a, a more reasonable charging standard than that, right? Um, USB-C power delivery is great in many, many ways, and I wish they'd gone here. Um, next thing, the color of the light is not amazing. I, I'm going to point it against the table here, and what you're going to see here is that there is sort of, eh, it's a little harder to see here, but there is a very cool white section. There's a, a little bit of yellowy section, and then it goes back to cool white. This is a very common issue with this particular flavor of emitter. Right, you can again see the, the little yellow band here. But it's definitely not the prettiest light ever. If you compare that to something with like a Nichia sort of emitter, which gives you much better color correctness, etc., um, and a more consistent light color, it's less impressive. Am I really dragging them for that? No, that's not what this is about. This is not the, the best way to do, you know, print quality color correct lighting 10,000 feet away from you. But at the same time, that's a thing. The screen itself is also, by the way, a little bit off-center. You're going to see that the, the text itself is not centered 
the, above the button, um, even when you get up to the higher, uh, the higher levels, um, which is not amazing. It kind of looks like the screen is a little bit off to this side, which is weird. It also gives less useful information. Sure, 15.98 volts, but what does that actually mean? What does that mean for runtime? When? Is, how long do I have running this guy? Um, one thing I've always liked about the Nightcore uh, TM series is that when you turn it on, it tells you both the output and the voltage, but it also gives you a runtime. You get greater than five and a half hours on this. And that really helps you to make decisions about how long you can run it. If you go down there and you're like, okay, I'm outdoorsing, I need, you know, it's going to be dark, it's going to be light in four hours, I need as much light as I can get, you just choose the output level that gives you four hours based on the battery level right now. I Given it, it's math, but it's math that I, I feel like they should be doing at this kind of a price point, especially when the run times aren't that amazing. Next thing, the batteries on this guy are non-replaceable. Again, if I take this little bit out, you can see that this entire handle here is more or less nothing but a battery pack. There's also a charging uh, circuit down at the bottom there, but there appears to be no way to get this battery pack out. There might be at the factory some way, but I've been completely unable to do so, and I didn't want to, you know, force it. But all inside here, they say on their website, this is... Uh, eight 21700 batteries. Um, and you can take this out, but they don't appear to sell extra of these handles on their website, which would actually make a lot of sense, right? You sell the emitter, and then you can get three of these guys and throw them all in your pack, and that way that gives you as much search lighting as you need for an entire night, right? Um, that would make a lot of sense. But unfortunately, the fact that they don't sell these additional battery packs, and it would also allow you to replace this down the road. It could be that if you contact them and ask nicely, they would sell you a replacement battery pack handle. But this feels like a thing they should be doing just on a regular basis, both for their stated purpose of search and rescue, um, because remember, this isn't going to last you the entire night at search and rescue kind of brightnesses, but also um, for long term, because it's a little bit weird um, when you have something with batteries are a consumable part, right? And so anything that batteries that you can't replace is, well, eventually going to be e-waste. And so I'd like to be able to replace the cells or at the very least buy a replacement handle that I can swap out partway through the night. Next thing, this guy puts out a ton of heat. Now, the reason I only ran it at turbo mode for as long as I did is because otherwise this would get to the point where it would melt my uh, review table here. They say hot on here. That is not an understatement. If I turn this all the way on, not only do the fans kick on, but the fans don't actually provide enough to keep it cold or, or even, frankly, cool to the touch. This becomes uncomfortable to the touch very quickly. And in fact, if I put this guy on turbo and I put my hand here, it is really like this is the distance. This is not a, a distance at which I can keep my hand comfortably. Um, this puts out a, an amount of heat that is absolutely astounding. Um, just this far away, my hand hurts. Literally, it is painful. Um, and so that's not great. I mean, you think, don't do it, you idiot. Well, yeah, that's true. But it's just something you want to realize and something you want to consider, right? And then once you get this guy good and hot, if you've been running this, if you run a full 60-second turbo cycle and then keep it at 22 for a little while, this gets to the point where I wouldn't want to set it down on something. And that actually leads to an awkwardness, right? The only way you can set it down when it is hot, that this hot part up here, because this entire bell heats right up, is you have to tail stand. It. And that requires a flat surface, and it's a little bit top-heavy. So, unfortunately, um, that's a little bit weird. It's also very awkward with this shoulder strap, right? Because the way the shoulder strap does it is it kind of keeps this up against your hip and stomach. And um, that's not going to be comfortable for long. So, in practice, you're going to need to manage the heat of this thing. And although the fans are going to help, uh, even in relatively cool, like it's 65 in here right now, and... Uh, yeah, this guy stays hot for a while. So this puts out an uncomfortable amount of heat. Um, next thing, the fans on this guy are rather loud. I mean, seriously, this is not nothing. And I don't blame him for it, right? But at the same time, oof. Um, that is definitely a loud set of fans. And it's going to be, well, not like any part of this is subtle, but that's a thing you're going to want to consider, right? Especially if you're using this from, you know, uh, I don't know. It's going to make conversation a little bit more tricky. Certainly makes gear review filming a little bit tricky, too. Um, next thing, price on this guy is 670 bucks, which, oh my god. That, I mean, technically it's 669 which be nice, but this is a crazy price. It may well be what it costs them to make it, but oof. Um, this is very easily in like 12 good lights for 12 people <laughs> territory, which might be a little bit more useful to your search party than this bad boy right here. This is a lot of money.
right? Um, for a lot of people, this is way prohibitively expensive, and I would never have considered it. Had they not sent this one to me, and I'm going to be open with you, had they not sent this for free, I never would have considered picking one of these guys up, right? That's the way, uh, that's the way it is, right? That's just a crazy amount of money. And so uh, the, the, the price is very high. Next thing on the bad side, this guy, and the last thing on the bad side, is that the runtime here is not actually as impressive as you would hope. You see this big-ass battery pack, this huge flashlight, and you're like, okay, Cool, I got this on my shoulder. I'm going to be good for the entire night. But in practice, not as much. So you run this at 100,000. You go full turbo. You get 60 seconds of turbo. And then it steps down to 20,000 uh, 20, lumens for a little while. And remember, the fans are running, which itself will be draining some battery here. Um, so you get about an hour um, at the highest mode that you can sustain right? Um, that's not super impressive, right? Um, then if you want to go 5,000 lumens, which to be fair is still a crazy amount of light here, I'll, I'll put it to 5,000 lumens here off camera. And this is still a large amount of light. I'm pointing this across the room and you can still kind of detect it on the surface here. This is still brighter than I really want to look at with unshielded eyes against the white wall. Right, this is a, a lot, but you get seven hours of that. You get 2,000 lumens for nine hours, which is getting to the point where it could be an overnight kind of search level. Um, but 2,000 lumens, is, it's still a fair amount of light, but it's not like, oh my God, crazy light. Um, and the lowest output that you get here is uh, 700 lumens, and that's only 14 hours of use. This is still way better than your average like 18650 light, which is going to run, oh, come here. This is probably going to run something like 700 lumens for maybe two or three hours. But given the fact that this guy takes four and a half hours to charge and the fact that you can't buy other battery packs means that this guy actually is kind of limited in its duration. It's limited in staying power. You can get a, a pretty moderately bright light for about a night's worth of searching, but at the same time, if you're looking at this and going, oh yeah, cool, be able to light up the world like a sun all night long. Like, no, not at all. You got to light up the world like a sun for about an hour then the thing's going to be really hot, so you're not going to want to touch it, and you can't get a new battery pack for it. So you're going to end up needing a couple of these and kind of rotating through if you want bright light all night long, or you're going to want to make sure and uh, talk to them and see if you can get some additional battery packs somehow or another. But anyways... In practice, it kind of made me realize that this is not a light that you can really count on to be a long-term light um, uh, oh, for your entire shift. This is a lot of light for a very, very brief amount of time rather than being a constant light source. It'll do that okay, but it, it just, I kind of hope the run times would be a little bit better um, than they ended up being. This is aimed at being, uh, well, <laughs> it's a lot of show, um, but not a long time of glow, right? And this is particularly ugly with the ugly interaction we're going to talk about in a second. But all of that is the bad, is that the run times aren't actually as impressive as I'd like. Um, it is 670 bucks. The fans are super loud. It puts out a ton of heat. Uh, like, it's hard to express to you the amount of heat that this guy puts out. It's kind of crazy. Um, it is non-replaceable batteries, uh, or at least they're, they're not showing us how to replace these on their website. Um, the screen is a little bit off-center. The color of the light isn't amazing. It is using a barrel charger rather than an 18... I'm sorry, rather than a USB-C kind of thing. On the ugly front, this does have one ugly issue, and that is idle power drain. What I mean by that is that, you know, an, a piece of electronic gear will, in many cases, have some drain while the, 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 the object is sl switched off, right? You're not interacting with it. It's just sitting in its case in the corner. This guy, unfortunately, that, that's a thing that you expect, right? If you come back to a piece of gear after, you know, a few months, having 90% rather than 100% battery, okay, whatever, not a big deal. But this guy drains very, very quickly in an idle state, leaving this guy in its case without any kind of indicator about whether the switch... Ah, whether the switch is on here. Let me turn this down a little bit because yikes. Um, cycling through. And there we go. Okay. Um, but leaving this guy in its case with nothing on, no interaction at all, this guy drains down to a state of, oh my God, charge me right now. I'm shutting off in about three to four weeks. And it takes, again, four and a half hours to get it full back to working. Um, this is just not great, right? And it makes it less useful as a ready-to-go light. And by the way, I don't think I'm the only person with this problem. Did a couple of online reviews and a couple of other folks mentioned that. So this is a light with a really, really heavy amount of self-drain. And that's really unfortunate. And it makes it a lot less useful as a kind of ready-to-go light. You don't just toss it in the back of your truck and you always have the light of the sun. You're going to want to take it out of the case. You're going to want to charge it every couple of weeks if you want it to be always ready. Or you can keep it in eternally in hardware lockout mode. If you take it to this point, it should not be able to drain the battery at all. 
right? Um, at this point, there's no ability for it to. It should all be disconnected. But at the same time, um, most flashlights drain a little bit when off, but this is pretty exceptional. And given that the run times are a little bit iffy at full charge, if you take this guy out and you're like, oh, crap, I had this in my, I had it in the box for two weeks. I'm at half capacity. That's going to be really ugly, right? And so to me, that feels like a major issue, right? The fact that the run times aren't that amazing and it's combined with this self-drain thing, not great. So to me, that is what is ugly here. This idle drain is kind of a problem. So final conclusion, this is a very weird product, right? I mean, again, it's not without joys because it's got a nice strap, a shoulder, a nice case, a shoulder strap, a screen that shows the inputs, the outputs, the voltages. Well, no, it doesn't show the inputs. That's the LED here. Um, it, it's got water resistance, software and hardware lockout. It does tail stand with a hilarious website, wild amount of light output, um, active cooling, and just this overall sense of whimsy. Like, oh my God, they they did this? Really? Um, but it does have some problems with a non-USB charging mechanism with so-so color, an off-center screen that doesn't give you the information you need most, non-replaceable batteries, a bunch of heat generation, super loud fans, super high price, run times that aren't really that great, and considerable idle drain. Ultimately, I end up feeling like this is kind of a weird thing. At one level, it makes sense as a Halo product, right? This is Immolent saying to the world, look at the insanity that we can manifest, right? A hundred thousand lumens off of something you can carry in one single hand is actually pretty impressive, right? I have to give them that any day of the week, right? And the active cooling, the sheer impressiveness of this emitter head all add to that feeling. And Halo products are often more useful to the company as some things being visible than things being used, right? The reason that Apple comes out with a $20,000 configurable Mac Pro is not because they think a bunch of people are going to buy it, but so that a bunch of people know they could, right? That's the important thing here. And so it makes sense in a lot of ways that they would send a bunch of these around to YouTubers uh, rather than, you know, just kind of having them out there like, hey, everybody can get them now. I mean, and they really did. These went out to a bunch of people. Like, this is the first and last time that my content is going to overlap with Evan and Caitlin, I, which I say, by the way, is a patron of theirs and with great appreciation for the content. But still, it's kind of funny how widely they spam these around the review world and, and, and frankly, just the influencer world generally, right? Um, so that's definitely a thing. And you know what? It could get people looking at Immolent's site to see what's a little bit more reasonable that they could pick up right? Because you don't need this kind of crazy output. And that's the other thing to remember. I mean, is this a flashlight you should consider? No, probably not, because you don't need this kind of output. I, you know, I was talking with Advanced Knife Bro, who's also advanced. He's a, he's a flashlight bro, much more so than I am. Uh, all the respect to his flashlight reviewing. I was talking to him about it, and we both said roughly at the same time, our texts crossed, you know, at that point, because he said, oh yeah, I've got one that's 60,000 lumens. And, I, and we both said, you know what, at that at that point, 60 versus 100,000 lumens is pretty much academic, right? And this is partly a truth of human vision and partly just like, at a point, it's just, it's ridiculous. And the question is, how much more ridiculous do you want to be, right? This is not something that you need. The, this puts out an amount of light that is more than you need in all but the rarest of circumstances. And it is absolutely not a practical daily light. There is really just not a way to, like, I'm picturing carrying this around on a dog walk. If you do that, you are doing a bit rather than just carrying a flashlight. That's a welcome thing. You're welcome to do it. But dude, it's a whole other thing. And then the fact that the high outputs are very limited in terms of both heat and and in terms of short duration, and mind you, you might be able to get a little bit more power out of it if you're uh, running it at 40 degrees or something like that, Fahrenheit, of course. Um, but yeah, and then the other outputs, they're still quite strong, but they're not running necessarily for all that long. And the idle drain just makes it a lot less interesting as they squirrel it away for a time of need, power outage sort of light, right? Um, this is sort of weird. And then the fact that it's 670 bucks, which buys you a bunch of really great lights, right? That is kind of crazy. And the fact that you can't get swappable battery packs, I, I, I can't help but feel like something that's vehicle mounted with, or something with swappable battery packs would be a much better choice for actual search and rescue, like search lighting kind of stuff. And you'd probably get higher output for longer. Like, I mean, search and rescue folks, let me know in the comments if I've completely screwed this up and this is in fact your perfect tool. But to me, it just kind of seems a little weird. So ultimately, <clears throat> I'm kind of, it's weird, right? It's cool. 100%. It's weird. Like, it's bizarre. It's it's awesome. And it's a fun thing to show off. But 
I don't know that it's really a practical light that you should even think about. It's the Cold Steel Espada XL of flashlights. That's a, 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 For those of you in the knife world, that's going to make sense. It is a big, ridiculous, jackassy thing that is kind of meant to be big, ridiculous, and jackassy. It's not as much practical for actual use uh, as it is like, oh my god, that's crazy! And you know what? That's cool. And so... Uh, that said, I just don't see myself recommending something like this for you in your everyday life. If you have a very specific reason that this would be perfect for, short of lighting things on fire, then great, let me know in the comments. But unless you've got money burning a hole in your pocket and you want to spend it on a light that can burn a hole in pretty much anything else, then I just don't think that this is the uh, search light that you've been searching for. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.